PCR calling control. Go ahead. Event number 23 completed. RSO, please note. Project. One, two, three. One, two, three. In the recent past, Lieutenant Navdeep Singh, Lieutenant Sushil Khajuria, Major Mukund Varadarajan, Colonel Munidranath Rai, Major David Manloon, Major Vibhuti Shankar Dhondial, Major Kostab Rani, 
and Colonel Ashutosh Sharma, who passed out from oh, this academy, made the supreme sacrifice in various operations. Elevation. Lieutenant Navdeep Singh and Major Mukun Vardarajan were awarded the Ashok Chakra on 26 January 2012 and 15 August 2014 respectively. Lieutenant Sushil Khajuria and Major David Manyun were awarded the Kirti Chakra on 25 September 2011 and 9 January 2017. Colonel Munindra Nath Rai and Major Vibhuti Shankar Kondiyar were awarded the Shaurya Chakra Azimut on 27 January 2015 and 18 February 2019. Okay. Major okay. Kashtane was awarded Bar to Sena Medal on 7th August 2018. Uh, message noted, sir. I will repeat the values 78.4 These and names will always inspire the gentlemen and women cadets okay, passing out when they take their final step at the officers training academy and first step as an officer of this illustrious organization. This no doubt will inspire these young men and women to emulate the gallant deeds of the brave officers as and when the day of reckoning comes. The officer on the extreme left, mounted on the charger, Prince, is the adjutant of the officer's training academy, Lieutenant Colonel Jaspreet Singh, an alumni of the National Defense Academy, Kadak Vasla, and Indian Military Academy, Dehradun. Lieutenant Colonel Jaspreet Singh was commissioned into the 3rd Battalion, the Rajput Regiment, on 9th June 2007. Colonel Jaspreet Singh has rich operational experience, having actively participated in Operation Rakshak, Operation Zafran, and Operation Rhino, both in Jammu and Kashmir and Northeast. The officer has served as an instructor Control, class B at the Nimble commando wing, Belgaum. Completed. He has also attended a foreign officer's mountain warfare course in Nepal, wherein he was adjudged as the best in physicals amongst officers and NCOs of countries, namely the United States, Canada, China, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. Control, a graduate of the prestigious Defence Services Staff College, Wellington, he assumed the coveted appointment of adjutant of this academy on 5th June 2021. He has been awarded the Chief of Army Staff's Commendation Card in the year 2016 for gallantry, for his commendable professionalism while leading his company during counter-insurgency and counter-terrorism operations in the jungles of Kokrojar, Assam. In a short while from now, the Deputy Commandant and Chief Instructor of the Academy, Major General Vikram Kumar, will be arriving. Major General Vikram Kumar assumed the appointment of Deputy Commandant and Chief Instructor of Officers Training Academy on 11th March 2021. An alumnus of the 72nd course of National Defence Academy, Kharagvasla, the General Officer got commissioned into the Armoured Corps on 11 June 1988. A second generation cavalry officer he went on to command his regiment, the 64th Cavalry, and subsequently commanded an independent armoured brigade deployed in the field area in the Western sector, followed by the challenging command of a counter-insurgency force deployed in Jammu and Kashmir. The officer is a graduate of Defence Services Staff College, Wellington, and has also attended the prestigious Higher Air Command course at the College of Air Warfare, Sikandrabad. The General Officer has tenanted various command, staff and instructional appointments to include aide de camp to GOC of an armoured division, company commander of an Assam Rifles Battalion deployed in Op Falcon, brigade major of an armoured brigade in a strike corps, director, staff and co-ord in Master General of Ordnance Branch and Brigadier Quartermaster of a Strike Corps. 
His instructional appointment include Instructor Class C in School of Technical Training, Ahmad Kaur Center in School, Ahmadnagar. Directing staff at Defense Services Staff College, Wellington and Commander, School of Armored Warfare at Armored Corps Center in School, Ahmadnagar. The General Officer was awarded the Chief of Army Staff Commendation Card for Distinguished Service oh, in the year 2014. Uh, Madam, he is a multifaceted and uh, vibrant can personality for, uh, with impressive social and leadership skills. He is a well-read professional, magnificent sportsman uh, and mentor who ensures professional excellence of men under his command. The General Officer uh, is also present with the Colonel of 65th uh, Cavalry lift since of silence. 20th February 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, the respect, the honor, and the aura that surrounds each cadet today can't be described in words. Indian Army, the word itself is enough to motivate anyone. And each one of these cadets standing here today proudly felt this at some moment and decided to be an Indian Army officer. He is a hero, but at the same time, an ordinary individual who finds the strength to preserve and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Vikram Kumar, Deputy Commandant and Chief Instructor of the Officers Training Academy, Chennai, has arrived. In a short while from now, the Commandant of the Academy, Lieutenant General Sanjeev Chauhan, Ativishist Seva Medal, Yudh Seva Medal, will be arriving. P3 noted. Auto noted. Auto noted. Lieutenant General Sanjeev Chauhan at the Vishist Seva Medal, Yudh Seva Medal, was commissioned into the first Gorkha Rifles of the Malau Regiment on 19 December 1987. The General has rich operational experience, which includes 
commanding a platoon in the Siachen Glacier, a company in Operation Vijay, a battalion in Kashmir, a mountain brigade in Manipur, a mountain division in Upper Assam and Arunachal Pradesh, and the foreign training team in Bhutan as Commandant Indian Military Training Team. He has also been a senior commander in the United Nations mission in Sudan during the civil war in undivided Sudan. During his service, the general officer has held many staff and instructional appointments. He has served at the infantry school Mao, was director in perspective planning directorate of the army headquarters and brigadier general staff of the Indian Military Academy, Dehradun. The general officer has been awarded the Ati Vishist Seva Medal, the Yudh Seva Medal, and the Chief of Army Staff's Commendation. He also received three times the General Officer Commanding-in-Chief Commendation from Northern Command, Western Command, and the Training Commands, and also the Force Commander's Commendation from the United Nations Mission in Sudan. During his tenure as Commandant Indian Military Training Team, the General Officer assisted and supervised the UN mission deployment for first ever contingent of Royal Bhutan Army and prepared the roadmap for implementation computing and cyber security module of National Service Program in Bhutan. For his dedication and selfless efforts, the General Officer received letter of appreciation from His Majesty, the King of Bhutan, Chief Operations Officer, Royal Bhutan Army, and the Ambassador of India to Bhutan. The officer is academically inclined and holds two master's degree in defense studies and business administration. He has also been a senior research fellow at India's oldest think tank, the United Service Institution of India, where he published the highly acclaimed book, China's Strategic Behavior. If you now look to your left, you will see a buggy drawn by horses in which the commandant, as per the tradition, is arriving. Through learning and developing different skill sets in the academy, to be able to of various clubs, to surviving in the wilderness on their own, when they go for their training camps, developing the confidence uh, and ability uh, to stay without sleep, rest, lugging loads to long distances, to helping others and moving as a team, to developing the spirit of brotherhood, this academy has taught them all. Today, these cadets will proudly experience
minus 30 minutes and counting. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. A warm welcome to each and every one of you on this bright sunny day which marks a golden milestone in the annals of Indian space journey. It's a matter of great pride to note that the first ever Indian private rocket has come to the stage of its maiden flight today, thanks to the relentless efforts of the Indian space community, aided by the recent reforms in space sector. Today's mission reflects the power of synergy between the government and the private sector, facilitated by the in space. It is poised to boost the confidence of more such startups in venturing towards space journeys for which the sky is the limit. The presence of Dr. Jitendra Singh, Minister of State in the PMO, Science and Technology, Space and Atomic Energy, adds to the enthusiastic air that fills the Satish Dhawan Space Center here at Sri Harigota today. I am Jay Singh from DD News Chennai and I am joined by Mr. Abhay Kumar from Skyroot Aerospace and Ms. Mathuri from ISRO. It was the launch of India's first indigenous sounding rocket, Rohini 75, on November 20, 1967, that marked a new beginning for the Indian space industry. There has been no looking back for the Indian space sector since then. With the constitution of the Indian, Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, on August 15, 1969, the Indian space program gained momentum. India soon entered the global ranks with the launch of India's first satellite, Aryabhata, on April 19, 1975. In this journey of more than five decades, enriched with multiple milestones, including the epoch-making Chandrayaan and Mangalyaan missions, the Indian space sector capabilities have grown manifold. All thanks to the scientists and leadership team of ISRO. Till date, ISRO has made immense contribution to the success of the Indian space sector and placed India among the top few spacefaring nations in the world. Fast forward to 2019, we saw a new turning point in the journey of India's space sector. When the Union government decided to set up the new Space India Limited, ENCIL, under Department of Space, DOS, to commercialize the research and development work of ISRO. It was followed by a visionary and path-breaking decision in June 2020, when the central government opened up the space sector to enable the participation of Indian private sector in the entire gamut of space activities. The decision was taken to enable private firms in building their own rockets, satellites, related ground equipment, etc., so that it contributes to the holistic development of India's space sector. Following the vision of Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi to enable seamless participation from private players in India's space sector, the Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center in Space was constituted in June 2020. It was formulated as a single window independent nodal agency, which functions as an autonomous agency in the Department of Space of Government of India to boost private space sector economy in India. It was a very significant step taken by Government of India to tap the immense potential of Indian space sector and increase India's share in the global space economy. To give you some context, global space sector is witnessing rapid growth. A recent report projects the global space economy to be worth $469 billion, which grew by 9% from 2020 onwards. It means there is a lot of scope for India to tap this vast market. Hence, the recent space sector reforms were brought in to enhance India's share in global space market majorly through private sector participation. After the announcement of InSpace, its headquarters was set up in Bhopal and was inaugurated on 10th June 2022 by Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. He termed the launch of InSpace as a watch this space moment for the Indian space industry as it would be a precursor to many developments and opportunities in the Indian space sector. He gave the slogan, in space is for space, in space is for pace, in space is for ace. 
and emphasized on how in space isro ensel together along with active participation from the private sector would take indian space sector uh, beyond uh, the limits of uh, the sky event number 35 confirmed the introduction of in space as an autonomous body added a new dimension to the government's vision of bridging the gap among the government and private entities working in the space sector since its Block inception in space in coordination with isro uh, has been playing a pivotal role in boosting the private sector space economy in india with its role as a promoter enabler authorizer uh, and supervisor in space is acting as the cornerstone of space reforms in the country it has been working closely with the industry especially the young startups is sitting completed for the launcher with isro and its centers ensel and with various Locos departments of the government like department of space ministry of information and broadcasting department of telecom and department of promotion of industry and internal trade to facilitate and authorize the space non governmental entities ngees to undertake space activities in the country the space sector reforms have opened a whole new world of opportunities for the industry there is a revolutionary change that can be seen in the private space industry we can clearly see an increasing interest from the private players in the sector in last one year there has been a massive boom of startups in the space tech sector number of space startups have gone up as per the economic survey of india till 2021 there were more than 100 space startups registered which is a jump of close to 500% in the last 5 years the numbers are set to increase further with reforms by the central government and increase in investment traditional vendors to isro and msmes are diversifying by going up the value chain lnd and bharat electronics limited through a consortium have come forward to take a giant step to manufacture the pslv rocket investment in space sector is increasing recently skyroot aerospace received the highest ever funding in the form of venture capital of 51 million us dollars followed by agnikul cosmos which received a funding close to 20 million us dollars in november 2022 this depicts the rising confidence amongst the investors in the vibrant indian space sector as an expected outcome of this deregulation brought in by the space reforms in addition isro is going all out to help ngees to help give access to its ecosystem and its expertise in fact next big milestone is going to be the launch of agniborn sorted suborbital rocket by agnikul cosmos an aerospace startup incubated at iit madras in space team is working with agnikul to enable the launch of their suborbital flight in coming months in space along with ensel is playing an important enabling role in this coming age of the indian space sector the growing number of applications received by in space from space ngees is a testimony to the growing momentum in the private space sector till date in space has received more than 150 proposals from startups msmes Block and industries online enabled by in space digital platform for new space ventures and activities in space has signed 16 memoranda of understanding and issued five authorizations to space non governmental entities for undertaking space activities in the country it is continued efforts to scale newer horizons in india's space domain on 16 november 2022 in space authorized the first ever private sector launch of a launch vehicle by skyroot aerospace a hyderabad based space startup and today is going to be a memorable day in the history of indian space sector when the first ever launch of a privately designed and built rocket from india will take place from isro space port satish dhawan space center at sri harikota andhra pradesh namaskar very good morning and welcome to the live coverage of india's first private sector rocket launch from the satish dhawan space center the space port of india we are around 
20 minutes away from the launch and uh, I am Abhay Kumar from Skyroot Aerospace live together with my fellow commentators and in a few moments we will be executing India's first private launch from this very launch complex which has seen hundreds of ISRO launches over the last 50 years. The entire Skyroot team is excited to bring to you the first of many such endeavors on screen the rocket already for the launch undergoing final preparations and uh, we are launching today and let me introduce to you our the Vikram S rocket named after the famed scientist and the founder of Indian space program Dr. Sarabhai. Please repeat on the, the screens a view from MCC where the esteemed guests and participants now back to the view from the launch pad where last minute preparations are going on and we are all very close to the launch. On your screens now, the VVIPs as well. Namaste viewers. I am Madhuri, Deputy Manager, Valve, SDSC Shar, welcoming you okay. with my fellow commentators from the Mission Control Center for this momentous launch. You have just now watched the launch vehicle on the launch pad and few visuals from the Mission Control Center where the team from Skyroot Aerospace are all eager to witness their first ever launch of Vikram S. Let me introduce Skyroot Aerospace to our viewers. Skyroot Aerospace is a two-time national award-winning space startup founded by Pavan Kumar Chandana and Nagabharat Dhaka. This largest privately funded space startup in India has reached launch just within four years of its incorporation with more than 200 employees with an average age of less than 30 years. This is the team of uh, Skyroot Aerospace. You see the Skyro Aerospace team at their facility at Hyderabad. Um, the dedication with which they have worked for. You can see on your screen photo of Honorable Prime Minister. Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi along with the two co-founders taken in front of their rocket stages. This was taken when Honorable Prime Minister met them during the inauguration of InSpace headquarters. So what is special about today's launch? Yes, Madhuri, today is a very special day. A new aram ka praram ho raha hai, Skyroot dwara. And let me tell you that this is a very special day for Skyroot Aerospace, where the company is launching its maiden rocket under the name Praram. Means the beginning, signifying a new era of the private sector in India. Uh, and the first mission of Skyroot, the Praram mission was unveiled at ISRO headquarters uh, Bangalore after the technical clearance from the space regulator in space. Praram mission aims to launch Vikram S, a suborbital rocket from the launching facility at Sherikota. Some of the pre-integration activities are on your screen. The Vikram S is a single stage solid fuel suborbital rocket which takes about two years to develop uh, and uh, has been built in India using advanced technologies. One of the key technology is the vehicle structure is built from carbon fiber, which is four times lighter than steel, making it one of the India's few space vehicles to do so. The other key technology is the use of 3D printing, which was used to build the four thrusters, which I'm offer the spin stabilization that? to this aerodynamically stable rocket. Please View from uh, the VIP galleries on MCC, Madhuri, I would like to ask you that why don't you tell us something more about Vikram rocket? Uh, yes, sir. As we are just 15 minutes uh, about uh, 20 seconds away from the launch, it's appropriate to let the viewers know more about the Vikram uh, launcher. The overall dimension of the rocket is 6 meters in height and around 380 
mm in diameter with an overall lift of mass of 545 kg. The vehicle is powered by a single stage solid propulsion system called Kalam 80 which has a burn time of 23 seconds and a peak thrust of 7 tons. Vikram S has a capacity to lift off and climb to an altitude of over 80 kilometers which is commonly defined as the beginning of space. However, this first mission will be a success if the vehicle crosses 50 kilometers in altitude. As a comparison to our viewers, a normal passenger flight flies at an altitude of nearly 10 kilometers. Vehicle is powered off and health of the vehicle is observed to be nominal. Please stand by for a video on um, uh, from the co-founders of Skyroot Aerospace the CEO Mr. Pawan and the CEO Mr. Bharat please stand by for the video this mission we have flight proven several critical technologies that go into our Vikram series of space launch vehicles such as avionics, propulsion systems, carbon composite structures and thermal protection systems. This milestone would not have been possible without the great support we received from ISRO and in space who worked with us hand in hand throughout our journey. This is such a landmark event for the country. We thank the Prime Minister of India for creating space reforms which enabled us to achieve this milestone. This Vikram rocket can reach hypersonic speeds that is five times the speed of sound within just 25 seconds and reach space within just 150 seconds. This Vikram rocket is one of the world's first few rockets built with all carbon fiber structure and it has four 3D printed engines for creating roll stability for the rocket. We at Skyroot have been waiting for this moment for long and team Skyroot has been working several months towards this great milestone. Welcome back to the live coverage on your screens now. The Skyroot rocket Vikram S all set to launch. You can see final activities, last minute activities going on and soon the launch pad will be cleared. Now you have the view from MCC where we are having our VIP guests. Uh, Sri Pawan Goenka, Chairman in Space on your screens, very intently discussing final aspects of the uh, pre-launch preparations and uh, with uh, now on your screens the mission profile which this rocket is going to follow after liftoff uh, from the sound engine rocket complex at Shehri Kota using the standard launcher here uh, we will lift off the rocket will fly move on the rocket rails the launcher rails for around 0.73 seconds and around 100 millisecond after that, that is around 0.8 seconds, the spin rockets will be fired to stabilize the rocket. Then the aerodynamics will kick in and the fin cans will maintain the spin stabilization. The rocket is all through aerodynamically stable and that is how the control is offered. Around 15 seconds, we will experience the maximum Q as the maximum loads on the vehicle and uh, we will reach an altitude of more than 80 kilometers and finally splash and down and see completed. some 134 kilometers away from Shehri Kota coast. So uh, this is the summary of our profile and you can see the mission is well planned and we are all waiting for this mission to successfully happen in around 11 minutes, 18 seconds from now when the liftoff will take place. We will continue our uh, mission speech like this and uh, Madhuri, why don't you uh, take us further in terms of uh, what is the weather climate and what are the further flight profiles? Yes sir, it's a bright sunny morning here in Srihari Kota with the benign winds. The ground wind speed is likely uh, between 7 to 8 meters per second. However, the vehicle is capable to thrive in much higher winds of up to 25 meters per second. Uh, the nominal liftoff of Vikram S from Sri Harikota is at 11 hours 30 minutes on uh, 18th of November 2022. The range and tracking operations for Vikram S are being undertaken by SDSC Shar range operations at ISRO. 
Telemetry data will be captured by ISRO telemetry tracking and command network station of ISRO and relayed to the control center. The seamless joint efforts of various ISRO Minus centers including the SDSC SHAR, ISTRAC, VSSC, Skyroot team and in space have enabled the Skyroot Vikram S rocket to be launched ready in a short period of time. In space technical mission readiness review committee members from ISRO centers, in space ex officio experts from ISRO rigorously reviewed launch vehicle and integration preparation and gave guidance to enable final launch clearance. The maiden rocket launch for Skyroot Aerospace is perhaps the most important milestone for the Indian private space sector since the space reforms announced by Government of India. Though one small step, it is a giant leap to demonstrate the ability of the Indian space private sector. This will pave the way for many such private sector launches. The path-breaking launch of the first indigenous sounding rocket Rohini 75 that took place in November 20, 1967 laid the foundation of the Indian space program and changed the trajectory of the Indian space sector. Likewise, Mission Praramph, which is the first Indian private sector launch, marks the beginning of a new dawn and which will propel the Indian space sector into next orbit. So we are about eight and a half minutes away from the launch. Uh, why don't you in the meantime tell the viewers uh, what is the objective of today's mission and whether Vikram S is carrying with it any payload. Thank you Madhuri. Uh, view from the uh, MCC, we continue to monitor the launch very closely. And as you have asked, uh, what is the objective of today's mission and what is flying abroad uh, on board today? So to tell you briefly, to tell our viewers briefly, Pranam mission is a technology demonstrator Locker flight which will help test space grid hardware and systems and validate technologies that will be used in the subsequent launches coming up next year for Skyroot. The company is working on three orbital class rockets in the Vikram series again named after the founder of space program Dr. Saravai. Vikram S carries with its three customer payloads which are non-deployable PCB based payloads equipped with sensors and instrumentation to validate the flight worthiness and the payload integration process. Now we have this uh, a very interesting thing which is flying with the vehicle is something called Hello Space Cards. What we have done is it is something special and we have made cards called Hello Space Cards and they are flying on board carrying wishes, good wishes of 300 people who have contributed to this mission from Skyroot, ISRO and in space. So we have put these cards on the vehicle and this vehicle is going to carry these cards in around 6 minutes and 43 seconds from now. You can see the launch pad has been cleared of uh, men and yes, please stand by for an interview by Chairman in Space, Dr. Pawan Goenka. We will, we will shortly show you an interview with Dr. Pawan Goenka, Chairman in Space. Today is a historic milestone day in India's private sector's journey into the space sector. This has been possible because of the space reforms announced by the Government of India in June 2020 and the Skyroot Aerospace team in a very short period of two years have come to this point where they could launch the suborbital vehicle uh, VKS. The ISRO team, the in space team have played a big role in enabling uh, the launch today and I'm looking forward to a successful launch and a start of a new era uh, in India's uh, space sector. Back to the live feed. Uh, where the, the where the rocket is view is available to you, uh, the Honorable Minister of State, Dr. Jitendra Singh, uh, flanked by Chairman ISRO uh, and Department of Space Secretary Shri S. Swaminath, and also by Shri Pawan Goenka, Chairman of InSpace. These uh, dignitaries have uh, graced this occasion 
and it shows the uh, importance it shows the import it shows the importance <laughs> of the launch and the importance the, the which number, the government of india is launch according to this launch minutes. Four minutes, 52 seconds to the launch, and we are honored and we are inspired to see the Charvan top to, leadership uh, of this country in the space sector. Charvan to blockhouse, uh, the data reception is nominal. And signal strength observed is also good. In the space sector, uh, supporting this launch, blockhouse and as we all know, stations. this today Vikram definitely is a historic day, where after opening the space sector, the with the government support, with the support of agencies like InSpace, the, the facilitator, and with the support of ISRO, with the facilities uh, which ISRO has created over the years, we are all set for to create another history today where India takes a giant leap towards private sector participation in the space industry. Minus four minutes. Uh, Three minutes, uh, 58 uh, seconds to the there. launch. And uh, all clear weather you can see uh, is very fine here. As my colleague has already told, उन्होंने बताया है कि मौसम बहुत ही बढ़िया, मौसम बहुत ही अनुकूल, हवाएं बहुत ही धीमी गति से सात या आठ किलोमीटर प्रति घंटा की रफ्तार मीटर सात या आठ मीटर प्रति सेकंड की रफ्तार से हवाएं बह रही हैं और हमारे रॉकेट जो है ये डिजाइन किया हुआ है करीब करीब पच्चीस मीटर्स पर सेकंड वेग तक इस रॉकेट को हम लॉन्च कर सकते हैं इस बढ़िया मौसम के हम इंतजार कर रहे थे और हम में आज ये अवसर मिला है और हम इस लॉन्च के काफी करीब हैं अब सिर्फ तीन सेकंड बच गए हैं एस वी वेट फॉर द हिस्ट्री इन द मेकिंग द लॉन्च ऑफ अ फर्स्ट प्राइवेटली ओन कंपनी फ्रॉम द इंडियन सोइल Minus three These are the views from the Mission Control Center VVIP gallery with the top bass of his row along with Chairman in space and the Honorable Minister are uh, eagerly waiting for the launch. We are about 2 minutes 40 seconds from the launch. The efforts of four year, more than 4 years are coming towards the first fruition which will Blockers give one, a two. stepping Please stone event number 60 and 60 to all of us and uh, on, on your view the final views of the rocket as it take off prepares to take off all the preparations are in place all parameters behaving normally and uh, the launch being intently monitored ah, yeah. we will uh, madhuri why don't you tell us about a very important procedure called wind weighing for this uh, stable rockets yes sir as we wait for the launch let me just uh, throw Minus some light on minutes. it uh, today morning's winds were completed. measured using the wind profiler at SDSC uh, this data was then fed to the mission simulation software uh, and the corrections required in the launch elevation angle and the launch azimuth angle to compensate for the performance deviations of Vikram S due to this wind are calculated as you know these adjustments are possible with the launcher the azimuth and the launch elevation angle have been set accordingly the launch azimuth is at 80 degrees and uh, 100 degrees the LEA and launch azimuth as I said and this is what is required for this mission this is a standard procedure for all the suborbital rocket launches from SDSC उड़ान से बस एक मिनट दस सेकंड दूर हम लोग और जैसे मेरी सहयोगी माधुरी जी ने बताया आपको कि हम लोगों ने आज सुबह ये हवा की रफ्तार गति नापी है और इस मापन को हमने अपने मिशन सिमुलेशन प्रोग्राम में डाला है और कौन सी एंगल से किस धरती से कितना एंगल बनाते हुए ये रॉकेट उड़े ताकि हम जो चाहते हैं जो कक्षा हम चाहते हैं जो ऊंचाई हम चाहते हैं वो हमें मिले ये माधुरी जी ने बताया आपको रॉकेट का व्यू लॉन्च से सिर्फ 30 सेकंड दूर हम अब ज्यादा बोलने वाले नहीं है कुछ देर तक हम आपके साथ मिल करके इस रॉकेट की व्यूज को एंजॉय करेंगे लास्ट फ्यू मिनट्स लास्ट फ्यू सेकेंड ट्वेंटी सेकेंड वी मोमेंट्री गो क्वाइट एंड वी फील द लॉन्च अलॉन्ग विथ यू वी एंजॉय द लॉन्च अलॉन्ग विथ यू 
just 10 seconds to launch 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 event number 96 completed event and we have a successful lift off of vikram s rocket i think i should be able to show you the jubilant environment here at the mission right. control center where the entire team is celebrating the launch and the spin stabilized rocket the views from the launcher camera in a few seconds uh, the vehicle will undergo the condition of maximum aerodynamic pressure followed by the motor burnout and we will get you those confirmations shortly the vehicle will experience q max around 15 seconds and at the same time maximum aerodynamic loads will occur just to remind the viewers this is an aerodynamically stabilized vehicle at tw 20 seconds flight time we have reached mark 5 which means it is flying at five times the velocity of sound and with this the vehicle has achieved hypersonic velocities it looks like we do have successful burnout and the flight trajectory is tracking as per the prediction rocket is now at the altitude of 66 kilometers 67 now we have completed 80 seconds of flight time we are around 34 seconds away from the launch pad and the totally intended trajectory is being followed the present altitude is 75 kilometers as we slowly go towards our target of crossing 80 kilometers and way beyond that uh, nominally we expect to be around 100 kilometers uh, uh, when the peak altitude occurs see the screen views from the mission control center 86 kilometers in altitude we are at 85 kilometers now and uh, slowly and steadily we are reaching our peak altitude uh, if you can see it on the screens the um, altitude profile is being shown around 133 seconds have passed we are very close to the, our peak altitude we are now at around 88 kilometers peak altitude and uh, uh, everything has gone as per we have planned we are very close to the peak altitude now the peak altitude performance has been reached at around 155 seconds and now slowly the rocket will start its descent actually it has just started from 88 kilometers now it has come to around 87.1 kilometer the peak altitude being met this mission today has given a good such a successful satisfactory performance as intended by us ji ha ek safal udan pratham udan vikram s ke liye prarambh bada hi rochak raha ye rocket apni gantavya tak bhi pahuncha aur ab apni altitude ko ghatane ki koshish mein मात्र 70 किलोमीटर की ऑल्टीट्यूड पर अब ये रॉकेट स्थित है दिस रॉकेट अचीव द एपोजी ऑफ 89.5 किलोमीटर दैट इज द पीक ऑल्टीट्यूड अचीव बाय दिस रॉकेट वॉज 89.5। पॉइंट फाइव अवर टारगेट वॉज टू क्रॉस एटी किलोमीटर एज यू ऑल नो एटी किलोमीटर इज कॉमनली डिफाइंड एज द स्टार्ट ऑफ स्पेस सो दिस रॉकेट सक्सेसफुली वेंट इन टू स्पेस एज वी इंटेंडेड एंड नाउ after completing its mission of achieving the peak orbit creating the conditions for the payloads to function and uh, completing its job successfully it is or it is on its way back to a safe splashdown in the bay of bengal as we have intended the range right now is 115 kilometers away from shar and we expect it to impact somewhere around 130 kilometers away from shar the whole thing has gone as per planned ye bahut hi khushi ki baat hai ki sky route ki taraf se unke pehle abhiyan mein hi jo unhone plan kiya tha jo humne plan kiya tha wo hum successful rahe aur ab ye rocket apne splashdown ke bahut hi nazdeek hai aur hum 
किसी भी क्षण अब स्प्लैश डाउन के करेंगे और ये मिशन सक्सेसफुली अकम्प्लिश हो जाएगा आ, हम यहां पर बधाई देना चाहेंगे इन स्पेस को जिन्होंने इस पूरे मिशन को रेगुलेट किया गाइड किया हम बधाई देना चाहेंगे सतीश धवन स्पेस सेंटर श्रीहरिकोटा को जिन्होंने जिन्होंने ये हमें फैसिलिटेट किया इसरो को इसरो चेयरमैन को वी थैंक ऑल दिस पीपल वी आर हम्बल्ड बाय द सपोर्ट विच वी गॉट हैप्पी व्यूज फ्रॉम द मिशन कंट्रोल एंड या एंड नाउ वी टेक लीव फ्रॉम यू गुड बाय फ्रॉम अवर साइड हैंडिंग ओवर टू श्री पवन गोयन का चेयरमैन इन स्पेस फॉर इस स्पीच Thank you viewers goodbye Thank you viewers for joining us we sign off Safety officer confirm uh, clear launch uh, Please stand by we are going for inspection will assess and clear rather is normal Good morning. I'm happy to announce the successful completion of Mission Pradham, the beginning of a sky route aerospace. The rocket VKS took off at LEA of 80 degrees and azimuth of 100 degrees, achieved an altitude of 89.5 kilometers. and a range of 121.2 kilometers exactly what was planned by skyroot aerospace all systems as i can make out worked as planned and skyroot aerospace has demonstrated capability of various subsystems that will go into the orbital launch vehicle i congratulate skyroot aerospace their team members and thank various centers of isro specifically SDSC Strack and VSSC team members of in space led by director PMA Dr Jain and director technical Mr Rajiv Jyoti and many thanks to multiple reviews conducted by experts from ISRO in space and from outside uh, for the mission readiness and launch uh, uh, clearance led by Dr B Suresh this is a new beginning for indian private sector entry into space and it's a historic moment for all of us we have the pleasure of having honorable minister of state dr jitendra singh here with us to give us encouragement and i request him to give his thoughts on what this today's mission means for our country dr singh congratulations india it is indeed a new beginning a new dawn and i shall i say very appropriately as our team members have put it a new prarambh in the journey of india's space program and very many thanks to honorable prime minister modi ji who has made this effort possible by opening up the space sector to public private participation it's also a, a major step forward to india developing its own space ecosystem and emerging as a front line nation in the community of world nations and of course a turning point in india's startup movement well done team sky route the count the co-founders can join me here pavan iit khadakpur alumni bharat iit madras alumni 
who have worked day and night to make this possible. And of course, kudos ISRO. You have this day on the 18th of November 2022 added yet one more feather into your much decorated hat. And thanks, thanks ISRO for putting India as a frontline nation in the years to come and a nation to which others would look forward to vital cues in the journey of space sector. Thanks once again. Congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. Well done. And I request uh, Pawan Chandana, Mission Director for Praramba Mission and also co-founder of Skyroot uh, to talk about what it took to reach up to this point. And Bharat is the co-founder of, uh, of Skyroot, he is also here. Honorable Un Union Minister of State, Dr. Jitendra Singh Ji, Secretary Department of Space, Dr. Somnath Ji, Chairman in Space, Dr. Pawan Goenka Ji, Director Shar, Director VSSE, respected guests, our colleagues, and everyone watching this online. We are very excited to announce that we scripted history today by successfully launching India's first privately developed rocket, Vikram Yes. The vehicle reached space to an altitude of 89.5 kilometers and completed the required mission objectives. This Praram mission, as the name signifies, is the beginning of a new era in the Indian space ecosystem. Team Skyro dedicates this successful mission to Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, who boldly started the Indian space program in the 1960s, and Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji, who unlocked the space sector to the private players. And most importantly, we thank InSpace and ISRO, all their teams and their dynamic leadership who enable this mission in this most efficient way. With the able help of ISRO, this challenging mission was executed by a startup Skyroot and our very new space regulator in space within just two years from the government announcing space reforms. Ladies and gentlemen, this Param mission symbolizes not only India's first private rocket launch, it also symbolizes the potential of new India. We thank each and every team member of Skyroot for making this historic moment a reality and their family members for supporting them throughout this challenging journey. And importantly, we thank all our shareholders who have been our backbone in this endeavor. This is a small step by a startup and a giant leap for the Indian space industry. It's just the praram of a great future. Thank you. May I now request Rajiv Jyoti, Technical Director in Space, to talk about the role played by ISRO and in space in facilitating this launch. Very good morning to all of you. At the outset, let me also congratulate the Skyroot team for scripting and making a new beginning in the Indian space sector with the maiden launch of this rocket Praramb. Respected Honorable Minister of State, Dr. Jitendra Singh Ji, and our Honorable uh, uh, Secretary, Department of Space, and our uh, Chairman in Space, our uh, Member Finance, Team Skyroot, especially Pawan and Bhagat, Bharat, team led ISRO, which is led by Director VSFE, Director Shar, and Director Israq. Today's success is the culmination of efforts which is being made by various ISRO centers who proactively contributed 
in the launch mission of this rocket, designed and built by a private company, Skyroot. The whole launch support was given by, by provided with, they were provided in various forms, like today's Shar was have given is SDSC SR fee, the sounding rocket complex launch pad for its operation for the private launch pad, private launch uh, rocket. Sounding rocket integration and checkout facilities, tracking radar support, the ranging and tracking operations, ground and range safeties, NDT testing and many mission hardwares which were supplied to the uh, Skyroot team. And ISTREC also provided a support for compatibility tests at the development at the development phase and ground station support during the launch in the receiving telemetry which you are seeing on your screens. For all this support, Department of Space and in space have facilitated Skyroot by signing multiple tri-party joint project implementation plan with multiple ISRO centers. Praram being made in flight, safety was the paramount importance. So no stone was left unturned. Various expert committees were constituted to review the requirements of launch system mission and operation. I compliment the Skyroot team for providing compliance to all those recommendations which were given during the various relevant phase. The mission review and the launch review committee chaired by veteran rocket expert Dr. B. N. Suresh and the member from ISRO and InSpace and ex-official experts from ISRO, they all critically reviewed each and every mission readiness requirements, launch vehicle systems, integration preparations, quality experts, as well as the most important, the safety guidelines. Finally, after obtaining all the compliances of all the actions, Shah range safety clearance was obtained committee was got a confidence and gave approval for the final launch. And really I thanks to God, rain God also that we are lucky that today we got a favorable launch window during this cyclonic month. I'm sure that flight data of this mission will be received, which are received at the various ground station is going to be very useful for Skyroot for their future mission. We will be giving not only for this performance of vehicle, but also give confidence for their next orbital mission. So this being a technology demonstration flight, it will help to validate their systems, which has gone as a payload into this launch vehicle. On the behalf of InSpace team, I once again congratulate the team Skyroot and looking forward to work for your upcoming orbital missions. ISRO is with you. Th thanks to the Department of Space, Chairman ISRO, and Secretary DOS, MRR and Launch Vehicle Committee for giving guidance during this landmark journey of great achievement. Jai Hind.